We all know that Streamlit applications provide a very basic and simple interface and creating a dashboard design and using Streamlit is a very tedious and time-consuming task. But the complexity of the Streamlit dashboard design is removed with the simplicity of the GPT-4 prompting. In this video, I am going to show you how you can use the power of ChatGPT to convert a dataset into an interactive dashboard that too in Streamlit. So let's see how you can do that. To kick things off, let's take a look at our dataset. I'm going to use the dataset for the food security indicators and there are a number of options which you can choose while downloading the dataset. So for this project, you need to consider a few options when downloading the dataset. Firstly, I'm going to select all of the countries because I want to look at the food security indicators for all of them. Then for the elements, I'm going to go with the value. Then we have the option for the years. I'm going to go with all the available years and we also have to select different indicators from the items. So from these items, I am going to select four important indicators. Once you've selected the option, you simply have to click on this download data button and it's going to download the data in the form of a CSV file. And I've changed the name of my CSV file and renamed it to unfoodsecurity.csv. Since we are going to create an interactive dashboard using the Streamlit, so the relevant fields for the different type of visualizations are firstly the area, which is the name of the geographical area, then we have the item which contains the name or the description of the item or the indicator. We have the year, the unit, which is mostly in percentage and the value represents the data value of that percentage. On previewing the actual data, there are a few things to consider while giving it the prompt that for the column item, this is the indicator field that we specified during the download. There are four indicators. So we want to decide that which indicator we should select in order to be displayed for the visualization. Then we have the year. You can see that it provides us actually a range of years, which is a bit tricky because if we want to get the actual year, it is in the middle of the range. So we need to use some code to handle these values. And then if you look at the value column, you will see that some of the values of this column use the comparison operator. So we need to have a way to handle this. Uh, the simplest way is to simply remove it. So we need to provide this information as well in the prompt in order to handle these values. So now that we have our data set and we have actually understood all the different columns in the data set, we can put it all together to, com to create a GPT-4 prompt that will create an interactive dashboard using Streamlit for us. So our prompt should include four important points. Firstly, we need to read the data set and processing it to extract the necessary information. Then we need to create a drop-down menu to allow the user to select the year. Then we need to display the Coroplet map for the selected year to show global food security values by the country. Then we need to create different type of charts like horizontal bar charts, line charts, heat maps, etc. with the highest levels of food security for the selected year. So putting these pieces all together, now we have a single prompt that looks like this. And along with the prompt, you also have to provide the data set. So here is the data set. Let's quickly go through the prompt. Firstly, I'm saying create the Python streamlit code for the dashboard to display the following map and chart. From the item field, use the prevalence of the severe food insecurity in the total population. Then for the year, the data is in the format year, year to year, year, where the actual year is in the middle. This is the second condition which we identified. So here we are saying that for the values, some values have greater than or equal to in front, remove these values. Then we need to have a drop-down menu. For that, we are saying on the dashboard, create a drop-down menu to allow the user to select the year. Display a coroplet map that shows the global food security values by country for that year. Below the map, create a horizontal bar chart that displays the country with the highest level of food insecurity for that year. Allow user to select a country from a drop-down menu and show its food insecurity trend over time in a line chart. Provide a histogram for the food insecurity levels for the selected years with 20 bins and a red color scheme. You can change it according to your requirements. Then if we have a region column, then provide a box plot to compare the food insecurity. Allow the users to select multiple countries and show a heat map comparing the food insecurity levels across the years. And use this color scheme for both the data visualizations. Use the streamlit wide format for display. So this single prompt has covered all the different aspects that we have identified from our data set. Now the only thing that is left is to run it. And once you do that, you will see that it will firstly analyze our data set and is performing all the different operations that we asked it to perform in our prompt. And then after performing the analysis, it has cleaned the data and the clean data is now ready for the Streamlit dashboard. For that, it has provided us all of this code and has also provided us a brief description of what the code is all about. 
So now the only thing that you need to do is to copy this code from here and run it on any of your IDE. I'm going to use the VS code in order to run the code. You can see in my project, I've already added my data set, which is a unfoodsecurity.csv file. And here is a file called app.py in which I'm going to paste all the code which the GPT-4 has generated for us. Now the only thing that is left is to run this code in order to see the dashboard. For that, you have to run the command streamlit run app.py and it is going to open a new browser window for you showing the dashboard. Okay, so you can see that the heading for the dashboard is global food security dashboard. Firstly, we have a drop down menu to select the year. By default, the year 2015 is selected. If we change the year to let's say 2020, it is going to change this chart, which is actually the Coropath global map showing the global food insecurity and here are the, on the clean value represented by different colors. Then if we scroll down a little bit, we ask it to provide us a bar chart showing the top countries by the food insecurity levels. Then we have a line chart for the food insecurity trend over time by the country. By default, Afghanistan is selected. So you can see that the food insecurity percentage has significantly increased from the year 2015 to 2022. If we change the country to say Pakistan, you will see that food insecurity trend in Pakistan was constant from the year 2015 to 2017. Then it started increasing and has significantly increased up till 2022. Then we have a chart showing the distribution of food insecurity levels globally. Then if we scroll down a bit more, we have a multi-year comparison of the food insecurity for all of the selected countries where it is showing us a heat map for the different countries. You can go ahead and change these countries. It will dynamically change the heat map for you. So you can see that everything is being done on the real time. Once you remove any value, it will dynamically change it. If you add any value, it will be depicted right here inside our heat map as well. So you can see that by just providing a single prompt to the GPT-4, we were able to generate this extremely amazing and interactive dashboard that to using Streamlit. So in this way, you can use the power of GPT-4 to convert any data set into interactive and amazing dashboard via a single prompt just like I did. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.